in my eyes, like seventh, eighth grade. Then it just started going downhill because I'm like, this isn't right. I don't know what's going on, you know? After the things came out in the news, it just was a downhill spiral for Derek Inside. And he changed his pain to drugs. Something changed where I see people coming in and just loving me at my worst. Throughout my addiction, I've been nothing but selfish. What I want, what I don't want, what I'm gonna do, what I'm not gonna do. I just found the entire key to my recovery is to not be selfish. The goal of the program is to not be jailing, but to be healing and working on your recovery. So you've got to make up your mind that this is where you wanna be. I don't care if you're complaining. I don't care if you're throwing up. I don't care if you're crying. Just don't quit. Don't quit on me. Because if you'll quit in here, you'll quit when you get out. So today, we're going to Wawasee Schools. Um, we're meeting with um, Dr. Troyer, their superintendent. And Derek is going to tell him kind of a little bit about his story and the things that he would like to talk to the kids about and ask for permission to, to be able to set something up to speak with the students and, and just kind of talk through where Dr. Troyer feels like the best fit for him would be. So what about your mom? How do you see her often? I don't see her as much as my dad, you know, but well, I obviously. talk to her at least two or three times a week. Okay. I applied for a credit card. Okay. Just to build my credit. You know, my mom put me on hers, which is cool. Yeah. You know, like I said, I'm, I know they, I still need them and I'm not trying to just cut them out of my life by, you know what I'm saying? I don't right. wanna, but right. I gotta be some form. You have to start being independent. I have to be some form of independent. I really respect the fact that you're trying to not lean 100% on your parents, but like still obviously appreciate them and, and love them. But I think you also need to be mindful to make those conversations that you have with them count, make the time that you spend. Obviously work is different for your dad, but if you're spending time with your mom, really be present in that time. When you talk to her on the phone, tell her what's going on in your life so that she does feel included in your recovery because they have invested so much into the time when you were in active addiction that it's not like they need to go through that healing process too and feel like they're kind of part of it because they were such a big part well, yeah, of I'm the other side. Cutting them out of it, you know what I'm saying? But my right. dad's just like, you always have a place to go. Answer this, Courtney. Are you going back to your parents' house? I did that. When you were what? 20. 20? Two. Okay, thank you. Not 32, not 40, not, you know. It's time to be a big boy. I got my big pants on now. They say it's a matter of time. A thousand days and the sun won't shine Before I come back to you When I'm happy Nothing's going to stop me I'm making my way home I'm making my way I was released from jail in February uh, 2020. Since graduating from JCAP, uh, went to Serenity House, graduate, uh, graduated from there. Uh, while I was there, I got a job at Jayco Manufacturing in Middlebury. When I got out of jail, I had uh, a whole list of goals, like 
you know, obviously one was complete the Serenity House, one was complete the Bowen Center, complete my classes. There's a lot of things, but they were, they ranged all the way from like, you know, make, it, make sure I don't miss a phone call all the way up to buying a house. All the whole list that I wrote out, I completed. Um, just three weeks ago, we purchased our first home, me and my fiance. Um, have a baby due November 3rd. I like making it happen. I like, you know, knowing that I'm gonna be able to provide for my family. It's like a pretty good feeling. Everything has changed for me since uh, before JCAP and now. You know, like I, obviously I put the work in, but JCAP led me to, to the discovery of what I needed, you know, or what I needed to do and how I could do it and still be happy. I just look back sometimes like, man, like, so I basically wasted 11 years in addiction. And I just like, I have no clue where I'd be, you know, if I hadn't done that. I also know that I wouldn't be the same person. It's kind of hard to put into words like how much I've truly, you know, to the bottom of my feet, 100% changed, became a different person. I absolutely wish that I could give what I found to other addicts. It, it is possible to change it. It really doesn't matter where you're at or how long you've you've been doing what you're doing or how long you've been in jail or how long you've been using you know it doesn't matter um, what matters is you it, and it matters what you want if you want more out of life it takes it takes effort it takes hard work it takes focus and determination and it's not easy you know it's really really not easy just don't don't give up hope you know, because <clears throat> once you do that, uh, once you give up hope, it's just, there's nothing to get sober for. My worst day sober is better than my best day high. It's really, really true. And if you give it enough time, and you give it enough effort and you stick to what you're supposed to do for long enough, everyone can understand that, everyone can know that, everyone can see that and live that. So just knowing that I have the, the strength and the knowledge and the willpower to do all these things, even though it's hard, is, is pretty amazing for me because I've never, like I said, I used to just give up, and uh, I don't have to do that anymore. What was the question again? The question again is, what are you afraid of and why? I'm afraid of being sober because uh, the fear of the unknown, like I've never done it. Like I said a little bit ago, uh, the longest I've had sober is 10 months, and I was in a controlled environment, rehab, and then jail, or jail, and then rehab. So I've never been on the streets free, like truly free, and been sober since I've been 11. That's, that's when I first started using meth. So the fear of the unknown, the fear of making new friends, meeting new people, just being out of my comfort zone. Gotcha. Yep. Got yeah, Chase. Uh, not being able to father my, my children. Uh, because of my past mistakes. I mean, I can say what I want to say, but until I get out to work release, house arrest, anything to be able to prove myself that I'm going to keep a job, pay child support, just father them and be an adult to my, you know, right. to society and just live a, you know, a, a good life. Um, Absolutely. They, I, I, I understand where they come from. It's just, yeah. uh, being patient, you know, because that's something that I want more than anything is to be able to just father my children, yep. to be able to love them um, and encourage them and help them succeed. Um, 
instead of fail like I have, you know? So, um, yeah. Just, That's great. And like I said, what are the two things we said about learning this class? What is it? Love God, love yeah. people. Uh, how's JCAP going for me? For me, it's been a life-changing experience. I've been dealing with a lot of issues that uh, I didn't know that I had before, but uh, they bring up a lot of uh, a lot of underlined issues and things that you wouldn't think about to uh, make you think about, you know, what started, what's your why? Why did you start with your substance abuse issues? Why did you become uh, uh, an addict, you know? And uh, to make you uh, really dig deep and, and think back. And then not only that, uh, makes you uh, think about all the people that you hurt. Cause you know, you might not have physically hurt anybody, but you know, say you're, you're a drug addict, you've sold drugs before, more than likely, 99.9% .9 of the time. So then you don't understand that you've hurt that person, you've hurt that person's kids, you've hurt their family, you've dug them deeper into a hole. Uh, and to understand that and, and realize the impact that you give to your community really uh, was a sobering thing to even think about. Well, I mean, I'm, I'm not gonna lie. You know, we're digging up a lot of old stuff, or I'm digging up a lot of old stuff, you know, that I kept buried on purpose, you know what I mean? Because, you know, you try to bury things and move on. You know what I mean? And because, you know, because the world's going so fast, you don't really have time to deal with stuff like that, you know? But this it really does give me the opportunity to, you know, work on those things that I have been missing on, that I have been keeping buried and just moving on with life, you know, that kind of adds up. So, I mean, it, it's been a little rough, you know what I mean? But it's been nice to actually have the time to focus on healing, you know, to really work on being a better version of myself, you know, and, and usually you, we all think we know what's wrong with us, you know what I mean? You know, like, oh, uh, but I'll deal with that later. Well, this is an opportunity, I don't have to deal with it later, you know? I've been waiting until later, now I have, I get the chance to be present and living it out. I was running on warrants because just being scared scared of jail and not really getting my life under control and I came in here and it was a blessing that I found JCAP. Like, it really was what I needed to further my life, like really get my feet back on the ground because I was I was running from my problems. And I was really good at that and this is, was my escape from that, like this is, this is my chance of life, for real. I don't know if this program gets enough credit because it really is changing lives like I mean I said it before uh, I'll continue to say it they, they really are they're changing lives like making you think about you know what your life is actually worth So, Dr. Troyer, this is Derek Bruner. Yeah, Derek? I remember. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Seen you a so, few months. You were for from um, Tippy, right? Correct. Yeah. We call it Valley where I'm from. Oh, everyone, Valley. everyone else calls it Tippy. It's all right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, I absolutely remember you. How are things going? Great. I mean, I'm in work release now, which is still incarceration, but I'm yeah. working with my dad and. Awesome. I got my license back in September. I get it back 23rd. Got a vehicle, you know, just ready to That's start awesome. life again, you know. Yeah. And your dad had a construction company? Yes, sir. Remember? Correct. Yep. Cool. That's great. So I'd be curious to hear what topics you're interested in talking about, and then um, we can find a spot. But I really think that small group dynamic I, would be a good fit for Yeah, you. that's what I'm... Ex yeah. be best for to you know start this i've never done this yeah you know i'm me. just excited to share my story to help people mm -hmm. but the topics the main four i think that we discussed would be bullying suicide peer pressure and then self-worth or self-esteem mm -hmm. you know i had a bullying issue i was a bully in school mm -hmm. i was one of the popular bully athletic varsity you know typical that type of bully but i was also bullied with my home life and situation, mm -hmm. the abuse that happened with me. And then that brought on the self-worth issue that ties into bullying. You know, you don't think you're worth being better than, a, you know, coming out of the victim. You feel you keep playing the victim. Yeah. So you want to victimize other people. For sure. That's what happened with me. And then that my self-worth kept dropping and, you know, the suicide topic came up. And then now I'm the happiest mentally I've ever been. So I want to talk about a little bit of my recovery and since what's helped me sure. get past all that. 
My biggest thing with this is I have had my eyes open to what JCAP can do, and I think we as a school can help not only you personally, but just in general, the program, we can help support the program by awesome. building this kind of partnership together. Yeah. Excited. Awesome. Thank, Thank you, you so much for your Absolutely. time. Absolutely. We'll be in touch for yeah, sure. Yeah, appreciate for it. Sure. Thank Thanks. you, man. Yeah. Thank you so much. <laughs> All right. So there's that. That one's Ball. so good. I'm so excited. I am a little bit hesitant. Just what do you think of his mindset right now? Um, I think that he's at a point right now where he's wanting things to be different. My question is, okay. does he want things to be different or does he want to be sober? Um, and those are not always the same thing. The other little bit of concern that I have with him is um, he's, he's young. When you consider that the rest of the population is a more mature age, yeah, um, he may actually. Benefit. And I've got a guy that's twenty-eight and who's so, going to be all by himself. He, they may. That may be a good pairing, but I also think that he's at a point now where he, he may benefit from some of the life experience. Like when when yeah. we've had previous experiences of individuals who have had more life experience, they've been able to speak into the life of those that are younger in a very mm -hmm. meaningful way. Yes. And so I'm wondering if that may actually be a benefit for him at this point in time. I'll go talk to Barry and Tammy both, and then I'll pop by Dan's office and just say, hey, what do you think? We could put 10 in. So July 12th of 2021, we started um, a new men's program and a new women's program, and we were super excited about it. Um, unfortunately, after about the first month, it became really clear that the women's program wasn't going to be viable. Um, a couple of, we had struggled to get enough girls in there, so we started with just six. Um, and then one of them bonded and one was released. And so when we were down to four, uh, one was removed for conduct issue. I mean, it just was like this. And so we had to dissolve that program. And that was sad because obviously we want to help the girls just as much as we want to help the guys. Um, and I think maybe as a consolation prize for me, the sheriff and jail commander decided that we could go ahead and start another men's program. My story starts with Fellowship Missions about two years ago when I came on as the director of the Addiction Recovery Hub. And since then, it has just been so cool to see the partnerships, especially with programs like JCAP, grow and just develop into this additional beautiful thing in the community. And now we are able to offer a safe place for folks um, that are transitioning out of the program, both JCAP and the jail, um, and need a place to stay and a safe place to land, come and grow and continue their journey. So when I first signed up for JCAP, uh, it was kind of just a, I don't want to go to prison thing. Maybe this will keep me from going to prison. Um, and I kind of had my aha moment, like, oh, I really do need this probably three weeks into the program. Like the first two weeks, I'm like, okay, I don't know if I can do this. And I started seeing the way I was acting was not, was not okay. Um, that I needed to probably get a grip on my life. And then it turned, at about that moment, it turned from I have to be here to okay, I wanna be here. I wanna do this for me. Chloe came to us um, late August, early September, and her journey has been one of recovery, but her journey has also been hell. In the first two weeks that she was here, um, 
She lost a really good friend to an overdose. Um, she and her husband lost their stepson. Um, and then within a week, her husband passed away. Hmm. Okay. Three weeks after I came to the mission, it was the first week I got sworn into drug court. Um, I was sleeping and the police came here to woke me up, to wake me up. And uh, uh, and they told me that my husband was deceased. My whole world shattered right there. We'd been planning for so long to just do everything together. You know, he was sober, he was doing good. I was just kind of like, what am I doing, doing this for now? Um, I had a really hard time finding the reason that I wanted to do this anymore. And uh, if I'm not doing it for me, then who am I doing it for? Not that there won't be more challenges, uh, but in her young life, she's overcome so much in two months that most of us in a lifetime don't have to endure. And so I'm super proud of her. And again, she's an inspiration to keep doing what we do every day. I would really like to be some sort of figure um, that can just help people, you know what I mean? That can, that can be there and not judge somebody because I felt judged for so long. I felt like nobody wanted to help me and I was just, I was a lost cause. So I want to be that voice and I want to be that person that people can run to and not judge them for what they've done or anything that they've been through. Because I have a whole team of people that did it for me. Well, you're well on your way to that, my dear, because you do that every day. I see it. I just want people to know they're not alone. How do you how do you complete four months and all of a sudden the last week and pull somebody out? I have warned him, warned him, corrected behaviors, had to recorrect behaviors. He is a big issue. Things happen for reasons and we have we take this program very seriously. You have 11 days. Give me everything you got. We're not perfect and and they need to be reminded that we just try every day to do better than we did the day before. We are a better, stronger person and they need to be reminded that they're strong, that they can do this. Because you have an addiction doesn't make you a terrible person. I don't think we can turn our backs ever. I think we have to help them get out of the hole they're in, help them realize that you're a better person without it than with it. Freedom.